What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh and right now we're seeing a lot of crazy things happen in our world right now which will ultimately trickle down to, well, the housing market. Even though the Fed hasn't started raising interest rates and everybody's expecting the Fed to raise interest rates in 2022 again and again, and again. And now with everything going on overseas, it is going to affect the housing market too. Now you might be thinking, how is a war on the other side of the world going to affect our housing market? Let me show you. The cost of housing depends on two different things. It depends on the price of a home and it also depends on mortgage rates because not only are you looking at how much the home is going to cost you also have to look at how much the monthly payment is on that home and mortgage rates are going to depend on well inflation we've been hearing about how the fed wants to start raising interest rates in 2022 in order to combat inflation so rising inflation means we need to raise mortgage rates well this war that's going on overseas is going to increase inflation even more, which means it can affect mortgage rates, which will ultimately affect housing costs, which could also have an effect on housing prices. We've already seen home prices grow at the fastest rates, well, ever. In 2021, home prices grew at the fastest price ever, and into 2022, we've been continuing to see home prices grow very fast. Like we saw home prices grow by about 20% in just the year 2021. And part of the reason for these super high home prices is because people have been able to buy homes with very low mortgage rates. We've been seeing the lowest mortgage rates in the history of time, so people were capitalizing on these low mortgage rates to buy homes, which helped prop up home prices because we also had a low inventory of homes available for sale. But now we're starting to see a shift in the housing market because inflation is finally, finally starting to become a concern for the Federal Reserve Bank because now they're finally saying that they want to raise interest rates in 2022. Well, in anticipation for the Fed raising interest rates, mortgage rates have already gone up. We've already seen 30-year fixed rate mortgages go up to around 4%, which is quite a bit higher than what it was just a few months ago. And keep in mind, this growth in mortgage rates that we're seeing is before the Fed has even started to hike interest rates. The reason why we're going to see a significant rise in interest rates in 2022 is because we have so much inflation. We've been seeing this around the country, around the world, where the prices of everything is getting more expensive. And so in order to combat inflation, the Fed has to raise interest rates because that decreases the monetary supply. Inflation is when you have a lot of dollars in circulation. And so to fight inflation, you need to tighten the monetary supply. Now, while I'm pretty certain that the Fed is going to raise interest rates in 2022, I don't know how many times they're going to raise interest rates in 2022. Some people say that they're going to raise interest rates three times. Some people say they're going to raise it five times. And some people say that they're going to raise interest rates seven times to fight inflation. The interesting thing is that all these predictions for how much the Fed was going to raise interest rates were coming out before Russia invaded Ukraine. The reason why that matters is because the Fed is raising interest rates to fight inflation and the amount that they can raise interest rates is going to depend on the amount of inflation that we have and the strength of the economy. So depending on how strong the economy is and depending on how high inflation is, the Fed is then going to adjust interest rates accordingly. And this war that's happening overseas is going to affect both inflation and the economy, which will ultimately trickle down to, well, the housing market. Let's start here by talking about inflation because inflation is going to be affected two ways by what's going on overseas. Now, if you are interested in staying up to date on a daily basis with everything going on in the world of finances, you can subscribe to Market Briefs. It's a free financial newsletter that I created. You can join for free. I'll put the link down for you in the description, but there's two different things that are going to affect inflation with everything going on. You have the direct impact and then you have the indirect impact. The direct impact is going to be the prices of things like oil because right Russia is one of the biggest suppliers of oil to the United States, and so we're already seeing the price of oil go up. Second is going to be on the side of commodities, like if you look at the price of things like wheat and soybeans. That part of the world is one of the biggest suppliers of wheat, and we've seen the price of wheat go up so much already because of this conflict, because now we're going to be receiving rest products from over there. So not only is the price of these items, these commodities, going to go up because we have a lower supply, but now because of the higher cost of oil, we're going to have a higher cost of gas, which means a higher cost cost of transportation, which means if you want to transport groceries from the farm to the store, it's going to cost more money, which means now when you go to the grocery store to buy your stuff, 
it's going to cost you more money along with the cost of your gas, along with the cost of your flights, along with the cost of pretty much everything else. So the direct hit here is energy because the cost of energy is going to become more expensive, which means that pretty much everything becomes more expensive with it. The indirect cost has to do with the financial sanctions that we are now imposing. President Biden has already come out and said that he wants to commit $1 billion to help provide some aid to Ukraine and other countries over there. We're providing military support. We're working on an emergency spending package to help these countries overseas. And then you have the Russia sanctions, which will cut Russia's ability to transact with the dollar. The United States is essentially saying that, hey, Russia, we're not happy at what you're doing, so we're not going to let you, Russia, transact with the dollar. And Russia is saying, well, screw you. We don't want to deal with the dollar anymore. Now, the first thing that you have to understand about that is that means that Russia is going to disconnect themselves from the dollar, which means Russia is going to be ditching the dollars that they have, which means there's an increase in the supply of dollars out there. Now, luckily, Russia isn't one of the biggest holders of United States dollars in the world, but another country like China is. So you have to think about this more in a practical perspective. If China is watching this and China says, okay, the United States doesn't like what Russia is doing. And because Russia is doing something that the United States doesn't like, the United States is cutting financial ties with Russia. They're not letting Russia transact with dollars. Well, if China does a lot of work with dollars and they do something that the United States doesn't like, well, what does that mean? that means that the United States might do the same thing to China. So this is also a warning to China because there's also other tensions between China and Taiwan and other issues going on over there that China is hearing this saying, maybe we should ditch the dollar as well because now we don't want to run into a situation where the United States tries to fight us financially by cutting our ties with the dollar. So China's not going to want to have those sanctions put on them. So there's a chance that China might start ditching the dollar or might start distancing themselves from the dollar and they're one of the largest holders of dollars in the world. Now, this has already kind of been happening. Russia and China have been spending the last couple of years ditching the dollar, but now because of what we're seeing happen, there's a chance that China and Russia are gonna take even more severe actions to ditch and distance themselves from the United States dollar. This is important to understand because right now the United States has more than $30 trillion worth of national debt. This is the most national debt that we've ever had. And a lot of this debt is held by countries overseas. So if we start to see more countries overseas start to split ties with the United States dollar, that would ultimately make the United States dollar even weaker because that would then increase the supply of dollars out there, which would ultimately increase inflation even more because now the value of the dollar becomes less valuable. So all these things that we have going on from the direct effect to the indirect effect come back to affect inflation, which will ultimately affect the way that the Federal Reserve acts, which will ultimately affect interest rates and mortgage rates. But there's one more teeny tiny little part that you need to understand, the E word, the economy. The Fed says that the reason why they're willing to raise interest rates is because we've had a strong economy and a strong asset market, AKA a strong stock market. But now in 2022, we're already starting to see our economy slow down because spending has been slowing down because well, people just can't afford the same stuff that they could before because they're running out of money because the price of everything is so high. So we're starting to see the economy slow down and now the Fed has to make a decision. What do they do? Do they fight inflation or do they fight a slowing economy? You can't do both at the same time. If you try to fight inflation, that's gonna slow down the economy. If you try to fight a slowing economy by decreasing interest rates, by trying to stimulate the economy, that's gonna increase inflation. This is where we're really facing a conundrum right now because the Fed doesn't know what to do. And now with all these new conflicts, it's gonna play an even bigger factor on this inflation. The reason why this is so important is because interest rates and mortgage rates have a huge factor when it comes to your actual housing costs and the housing affordability. So let's assume that you wanna buy this home right here. And in order to buy this home, you are going to borrow $400,000 from the bank. Well, if you go, and you can get this home for a 3% mortgage rate, which is what people were getting back in 2021. Well, then this $400,000 that you're borrowing to buy this home is gonna cost you something like $1,650 a month. But now let's assume the interest rates start to go up and we see mortgage rates go up to just 5%, which is where we're heading. This isn't that far away. We're already seeing 4%, 5% is really not that far away. Well, that means now this home is not going to cost you $16.50 a month. It's going to cost you $21.50 a month. 
But if the Fed has to take more drastic action to fight inflation by raising interest rates, and we see interest rates go up, mortgage rates go up to 8% a year, well now, the same $400,000 isn't gonna cost you $1,650, it isn't gonna cost you $2,150, it's gonna cost you $2,950 a month almost twice what it was costing you here for the exact same home. So while the price of the home hasn't changed, the amount of money that you're borrowing hasn't changed, the amount of money you have to pay to afford this home has significantly increased just because of what the interest rates are. And these interest rates are gonna depend on inflation and the economy. Now, if you are in the market for a home right now and you wanna lock in mortgage rates sooner rather than later, my one piece of advice is just make sure you shop around because some lenders are gonna charge you less fees and a lower interest rate than other lenders on the exact same loan. And one of the easiest ways to do that right now is by using an online mortgage comparison tool. And the following is an advertisement from our sponsor, Credible, who operates a mortgage comparison website. At Credible, you can check pre-qualified mortgage and refinance rates at no charge to you. They have multiple lenders competing on their marketplace. That way you can compare great rates and pick the best option for you. The process is simple. All you have to do is go onto the website and enter in a few pieces of information, which just takes a few minutes, and then Credible will present you with actual pre-qualified rates from different lenders. That way you can compare. The pre-qualification process is easy to use. It only takes a few minutes and checking pre-qualified rates does not affect your credit score. So if you want to learn more and see what mortgage or refinance rates you might qualify for, I'll put the link to how you can do that with our sponsor, Credible in the description below. Credible does pay minority mindset and advertising fee when you submit a pre-qualification request and Credible Operations Inc. NMLS number 1681276 is not available in all states. So if you want to learn more and see what mortgage or refinance rates you might qualify for, I'll put the link to how you can do that in the description below. This brings us to the most important question of this video. What is the Fed going to do now in response to this higher inflation that we're gonna see due to everything happening overseas? Now, at first glance, you might say, well, if we're seeing even more inflation, then doesn't that just mean that the Fed is gonna raise interest rates more aggressively? Well, potentially, but not necessarily. This is where it gets a little bit confusing because we don't always know what the Fed is going to do and they might have other agendas. So going back to what I said a minute ago, to understand interest rates, you have to understand inflation and you have to understand the economy. When you have high inflation, the Fed will try to raise interest rates to balance this high inflation. When you have a growing economy, that will also support rising interest rates. But what happens now when you have rising inflation and a slowing economy? This is where the Fed has to decide what do they want to do. Because when you have a slowing economy, if we ignore inflation for a second, if you have a slowing economy, then the Fed will cut interest rates, which will ultimately cause more inflation. Because when you cut interest rates, that means now you can go borrow money cheaper. People can go out and spend more money, which helps stimulate the economy. But right now, we are facing high inflation and a slowing economy. So now the Fed has to decide what do they want to do? Do they want to fight a slowing economy by cutting interest rates, which will cause more inflation? or do they wanna fight rising inflation by then raising interest rates, which will then slow down the economy even more. The reason why this gets tricky is because some people say that now with everything going on overseas, this could be a catalyst for the Fed not to raise interest rates as fast, even if we have higher inflation, because it will cause turbulence in the markets. Now, you might be saying, well, how does the stock market play a factor here? Well, although they're looking at the economy, a lot of times what they're actually looking at is the stock market. And that might seem a little bit weird, and it is, but if you just go back to 2021, or even 2020, if you look at both 2020 and 2021, we first started to see a stock market crash when the pandemic hit, the Fed opened up their money printer, and that then helped the stock market rally. Even after the stock market fully recovered, the Fed continued to pump money into the asset market. They continued to pump money into these markets. Why? Because they didn't want to see a stock market crash. They were willing to create more inflation, which hurts the average person just so people feel confident investing their money into the asset markets. Why? Because they don't want to see these company prices go down because you have a lot of companies out there which are relying on their stock price to continue operating. If you're a company and you're not profitable and you rely on outside money, investment dollars, debt, in order to continue your operations, well, if the value of your company goes down because your stock price goes down, you can't go out and borrow more money. And if you can't go out and borrow more money, 
well, then you're going to go out of business. So that's why the Fed didn't want to see the stock market go down. And if we continue to see more turmoil with everything going on, if we start to see a lot more volatility, well, then the Fed might say, oh, this is not good news. We need to keep the stock market up. And if they do that, and if they're not willing to raise interest rates, even at the expense of the average person to keep the stock market afloat, well, then they might not raise interest rates as fast as some people might expect. Now, ultimately, that is going to cause more inflation, which means that over the long term, it's going to be a bigger cost to our economy because then they're going to have to raise interest rates even more aggressively in the future. So there is a much longer term cost to that, but that is a potential. I mean, we don't know what the Fed is going to do. On the other hand, if the Fed says, well, inflation is really getting out of hand because we're going to see the prices of things really start to go up as we start to see the effect of the oil market, as we start to see the effect of these commodities. Even President Biden has come out and said that he's going to try to subsidize gas prices so Americans don't have to feel the price of this higher oil costs. But you have to remember, the United States government is not sitting on a cash pile of reserves somewhere. So if the United States government is going to somehow subsidize gas prices, that means ultimately that will cause more inflation. So yeah, you're not paying more for the gas to fill up your car, but now you have to pay more for everything else. We've seen this happen in 2020. We've seen this happen in 2021. We're paying the price for it now. All the money printing that the government does comes at a price. Anytime you pay for something and give it for free, there's a cost for that. The most expensive kind of money there is, is free money. So we're going to see more inflation. So which way is the Fed going to go? I don't know. If they decide to fight this, well, that means we could see an even more aggressive ramp up of interest rates. If we see an even more aggressive ramp up of interest rates, that means housing is going to become significantly more expensive, even if housing prices don't continue to go up, because now you're going to have to pay a lot more money to buy a home. And if people cannot afford these higher housing costs because their wages aren't keeping up, well, then you might see a smaller demand to buy a home because people can't just afford to buy a home anymore. And if you see a smaller demand, well, then you could see a correction in the housing market, likewise in the stock market. If the Fed really starts to fight inflation, they start to really ramp up interest rates, well, then that's going to affect the stock market. You could see a crash in the stock market happen because the Fed raises interest rates more aggressively than what investors want. So this is where we're trying to play a game and guess what's going to happen. And I don't know which way the Fed is going to go. I mean, there's really no way to guess it because in reality, we really have to start fighting inflation. Either we're going to do this now or we're going to do it later and it's going to be even more costly later. We can't just somehow fix this inflation problem by putting some fairy dust on top of it unless the Fed has some fairy dust that I don't know of because this is a problem that we're going to have to address. Either we're going to do it now and it's going to be painful or we're going to have to do it in the future and it's going to be even more painful. This is going to be a cost of fighting this. A slowing economy is going to be the cost of fighting this inflation, but this cost is not going to go away. So the question is, what do we want to do? Do we want to just put on another band-aid? or do we want to actually fix the problem? So this is what you want to be aware of, and we're not going to know what happens until it actually happens, which is why I say, if you want to stay up to date on what's happening, you can subscribe to Market Briefs. I'll put the link for you down in the description, but you have to be aware of what's happening. That way you can make smarter decisions with your money, and I'll also try to do that on our channel, which is why if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. If you enjoyed this video and you want a deeper breakdown of what's going on overseas with Russia and Ukraine, I'll link this video for you to watch over there. And if you want to learn how to start generating passive income, you can read my free guide, clicking that button below. Oil is very important for our economy here in the United States and Russia is one of the biggest suppliers of oil for the United States and now Russia has turned off the faucet 